In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the cell potential of galvanic cells and even electrolytic cells. So for a galvanic cell, you need to know that the cell potential has to be positive. So knowing that, if the standard cell potential has to be positive, how can we adjust these two equations in such a way to calculate a cell potential or the cell potential for a galvanic cell that uses these two half reactions. Now, we need to adjust it in such a way that the electrons are not on the same side of both reactions. For one half reaction, it has to be on the right side, and for the other, it has to be on the left side. And we need to switch the right reaction such that the overall cell potential is positive. So let's say if we switch the first one, this would be negative 0.8 negative 0.8 plus negative 2.37 will not give us a positive number. So that tells us that we need to reverse this reaction because then we'll be adding two positive numbers instead of one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to reverse the second reaction. And so the cell potential is now positive 2.37. And the first reaction, I'm going to leave it the way it is but I'm going to multiply it by 2 so that the number of electrons will stay the same. If you multiply this reaction by 2, the cell potential will not change. You shouldn't multiply it by 2. This is going to remain positive 0.8. It's not going to be 0.8 times 2 or 1.6. It doesn't work that way. Now, when we add these two equations, notice that the electrons will cancel because this is a redox reaction. One reaction has to be oxidation. The other has to be reduction. Anytime the electrons are on the right side, it's oxidation. If it's on the left side, it's reduction. So the electrons cannot both be on the same side. It just doesn't work out that way. So now, if we add these two reactions, on the left, we have the magnesium atom and the silver ion. On the right, we have silver metal and magnesium ion. So to calculate the cell potential for this overall reaction, all we need to do now is simply add those two numbers. So it's going to be 2.37 plus 0.8. So in this case, it's positive 3.17 volts. So that's the cell potential for a galvanic cell that uses these two half reactions. Now what about this one? Calculate the standard cell potential of a galvanic cell that uses the two half reactions shown below. So how can we adjust these half reactions in such a way that one of the reactions have the electrons on the right and the other have the electrons on the left and when we add the cell potentials it's going to be positive. If we reverse the second reaction this would be the cell potential is going to be positive 0.23 and if you add that to negative 0.44 that's going to give you a negative cell potential for the overall reaction. So we don't want that. Therefore, we need to reverse the first half reaction. So it becomes Fe, and that turns into the Fe2 plus ion. And so the cell potential is going to be positive 0.44. And the second reaction, we're just going to rewrite it exactly the way it was. And so the cell potential will not change. So now we can add these two half reactions. So these will cancel. And so it's going to be iron metal reacts with the nickel 2 plus cation to produce the iron 2 plus cation and nickel metal. So the cell potential is 0.44 plus negative 0.23. And so the cell potential for this reaction is positive 0.21 volts. And that's a simple way to calculate the cell potential of a galvanic cell. So you need to adjust the standard reduction potentials in such a way that the electrons cancel. Make sure that occurs. And when you add the cell potentials, you need to get a positive answer. Or at least zero. Zero is the lowest you can get. You shouldn't get a negative answer. Number three, calculate the cell potential of the electrolytic cell according to the reaction shown below. Now, as we mentioned before, for a galvanic cell, the cell potential can be positive or zero. 
but for an electrolytic cell, it can be negative, positive, or zero. It's based on the way it's written. So we're just going to have to calculate the cell potential according to what we see here. Now, you need to look up the standard reduction potentials that's associated for this reaction. So let me give it to you. Bromine acquires two electrons and turns into bromide. And the cell potential for this reaction, the standard reduction potential is 1.09. And for the next one, Fe3 plus acquires one electron to turn into Fe2 plus. And the cell potential for that is positive 0.77 volts. So using those reduction potentials, go ahead and calculate the cell potential for the reaction shown above. So what we need to do is take this overall reaction and break it into half reactions. So we can see that bromine turns into bromide. And the only way for that to happen is if it acquires two electrons. And so we have this reduction potential. And so the cell potential for that is 1.09. Now notice that we have Fe2 plus turning into Fe3 plus. So when Fe2 plus becomes Fe3 plus, notice that it's the reverse of this reaction. And so therefore, this is going to be negative 0.77. And we need to multiply this by 2. But it doesn't change this value. It's not like enthalpy where you have to multiply delta H by 2. For cell potential, it doesn't work. So these are the two half reactions that make up this reaction. If you add them, these will cancel. And then you get these two on the left and these two on the right side. So now all we need to do is add the cell potentials. So it's 1.09 plus negative 0.77. So for this example, the cell potential is still positive, but it's positive 0.32 volts. And so for an electrolytic cell, you need to calculate the cell potential based on the way the reaction is written. It can be positive or negative. Go ahead and try this one. It's very similar to the last problem. And in order to get the answer, we really don't need to balance the half reactions. We just have to make sure that the electrons are on opposite sides, and also that it adds up to the reaction based on the way it's written. But if you want to balance it, you could. Now the first thing that we see is that we have iodide turning into I2. And so we need two electrons on this side. The standard reduction potential for that reaction, it's written this way. And you can look this up too. You can go to Google Images and type in standard reduction potentials. This is positive 0.54. We have the reverse reaction. So this is going to be negative 0.54. And then we have the aluminum cation turning into the aluminum metal. And so it has to acquire three electrons to do that. And so this, notice that the electrons are already on the left side you can look up the reduction potential based on the way it's written. And for aluminum, it's negative 1.66. And so if we want to balance it, we need to get the least common multiple of these two numbers. So basically, we need to multiply this by 3 to get 6 electrons, and this by 2. So then we'll have six iodide ions, three I2 molecules, and six electrons. This number will not change. It will still be negative 0.54. And then we'll have two aluminum cations, six electrons, and two aluminum atoms. So we can cancel the number of electrons. So the overall reaction in its balanced form is six iodide ions, two aluminum cations, three iodine molecules, and two aluminum atoms. And this cell potential has not changed either. So for this reaction, 
it's negative. Let me do that again. It's negative 2.2 volts. So this reaction is non-spontaneous. However, in an electrolytic cell, you can put energy to drive this reaction forward. And so the minimum voltage that you need is 2.2 volts to get this going. But you may have to apply a voltage that's higher because some energy will be lost due to friction. So that's how much voltage you need, the minimum you need, to drive this reaction forward.